Hey folks, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at The Talisman by Tuya. Tuya is a fairly new company, came out in around 2017. This is one of their original first knives that they've done. The Talisman, it's a, oh, I'm very much liking this knife. It's got some weight to it, some heft to it. It's got a really strong feel to it. The blade shape makes it great for almost anything that you want to do. It's that really classic shape with a nice belly, a nice flat part, decent drop point. You know, the tip can be used for piercing. Great slicing capability with this. I'm going to call it a full flat grind, although there's a little bit of a flat up here on about two thirds of the blade. And the handle is just super comfortable. If you're interested at all, stick around. The review's coming at you right now. Oh, that sneeze was bandit. He's doing well. Love my dog. Like I was saying, this is a fun knife. Now, I bought mine through uh, Dave over at Warren EDC Blades. Maybe I didn't get that name quite right. Anyhow... <laughs> He's got his website. He's down in the United States, and uh, he inspects each knife before he sends it out, so it's good to buy from a small vendor. He is a direct representative or distributor with Tuya Knives. He's got direct contact with them, and so he's the guy to go to if you have any questions about your Tuya Knives. This is, like I said, the Talisman. We've got um, Os 10 Steel. Yeah, Os 10. This is uh, my first knife with AUS-10. The AUS steels are uh, a Japanese steel and AUS-10. I'm sure you've heard of AUS-8, which is a very popular budget steel. This is a definite step up from that. Uh, this is no longer just a budget steel. This is in that middle class of mid-grade steels. Uh, and the next step up is a premium steel. Now there's some people that would call this a premium steel. I got to get rid of that light spot. Let me see, how can I do that? There you go, that looks better. I got rid of that one spot that was in the middle of the blade. And OS 10 is a good steel. We've got a nice stone wash on this blade. Decent cutting edge that they've put on it. Like I said, it's just a mild drop point right there. Huge bit of belly here, good flat section. Great sharpener's choil, it comes out far enough. It's not really a forward choil for your finger. Uh, you can put it there if you want to, but uh, not the greatest idea. Flipper tab. And uh, I don't know why, but on one of my recent videos, I've had at least four people tell me, but Jake, don't you know that a flipper tab can work as a guard? <laughs> Come on, guys. Do you think I'm a complete idiot? <laughs> you know, I've been doing this for three years. I got 6,000 subscribers. Okay, so that doesn't really mean anything, but yes, I do know what I'm talking about, and I've even mentioned it on previous videos. Yes, the flipper tab can function as a guard. Isn't that amazing? I know, I'm being a little sarcastic, but sometimes when you're sick all the time and in constant chronic pain, there comes a point where you just aren't going to take that kind of garbage anymore. Come on, people, wake up! Yes! The flipper tab functions as a guard. If you're going to stab into something, it's going to protect your hand from slipping over it. Oh, wait a minute. I've said that on previous videos. I don't have to say everything on every single video, do I, guys? Okay. Okay. That's my rant for the day. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. You've got really nice thick uh, liners on here. It looks like titanium, but it is a stainless steel. It sounded like they were all super thick, but as you can see, they're milled fairly thin, but they still could have removed a bunch of the steel and still kept a lot of the strength. It's the G10 that comes and builds up here. But uh, so if you were thinking that that thickness was throughout the entire liners, no, no. <laughs> It comes thinner, but it still could lose some weight with some skeletonizing. We've got a backspacer here, no lanyard hole. I don't mind. Um, 
flip, uh, flipper tab pocket clip. It comes with a pocket clip. And if you want to spend an extra, what is it? Three dollars, you can get a black pocket clip. Or if you want micarta handle scales, you spend five dollars, they'll give you uh, micarta handle scales and a deep carry pocket clip. Now, I might just spring for the deep carry pocket clip if I can anyways. And yeah, micarta would be kind of cool too. But this is, you know, the basic version. It comes in three colors, this black, a green, and an orange. Um, and it's made very, very well. The edges here on the G10 and on the steel liners are chamfered. So it's very comfortable in hand. It's one of the more comfortable knives that I've held for quite a long time. And having this nice thick liner here, it's very comfortable to release the liner. Very easy to do, very comfortable to do that. Uh, right or left handed, it's just great. And uh, you know, I like using this knife an awful lot. Whoa, I'm gonna cut my tabletop. There's no hot spots that I found on this knife in either hand. Uh, mini grip orientations work just fine. You know, a reverse grip, even a reverse pull grip works very, very well as far as the comfort goes and the security in hand. We've got a proprietary pivot screw, yes, but any spanner, if you've got a set of screwdrivers that have a spanner bit set in it, and if you're a knife enthusiast, you will be getting that eventually. And uh, maybe if you want this knife, you'll get it sooner than later. Uh, you know, a, diff a little spanner bit, even if it just contacts at two points, is good enough. Or you can even get a short flat in there, and I tested it myself. And, you know, if you pull it just the right way around, you can easily get that to unscrew. This is an original one. You see their logo. That's a logo that they no longer are allowed to use. Uh, Times Warner said that that looks too much like their tea. And so that's why you have uh, the other Tuya logo. It, uh, the other one looks like the one on the Cebu, if you've seen my video on the Cebu. So if you see one of these knives with that T on it, then you've got an original uh, run uh, knife of theirs. It's kind of cool to have an original run from a company. That's that's kind of nice. I like how the text and everything on the knife is nice and small. Doesn't It's not all over the place and in your face. And it's a very comfortable knife. Since we talked about the pocket clip, it's right side only. Let's see what it looks like in a pair of pants. So here we go. Just, well, upside down is not going to do the trick. Slides in very well. You've got a little less than an inch, about a centimeter and... Well, 1.6 centimeters of the knife sticking out, not bad. Doesn't look terrible. Uh, you can, like I said, get this in a black and that would make it uh, blend in maybe a little bit more. But very functional pocket clip and easy to use. Let me move that back. And the stone wash is beautiful and some kind of stone wash on the handle scales as well. Small back spacer. So this knife is super easy to clean if it gets dirty since there's no skeletonizing in there and everything. Uh, it's a really nice knife that I am loving quite a lot. Let's go over all the dimensions and that information. The uh, weight of this knife is 183 grams, 6.45 ounces. Yeah, these thick handle scales add some weight. For me, 6.45 five ounces off oh, 6.45 that's not too much that's for the size of this knife uh, it's almost eight and a half inches deployed it, I don't mind at all if you mind hey well get a different knife uh, the factory cutting edge was done sharp enough to get a 155 sharpness rating that's very good I like that the length of the cutting edge is 8.69 centimeters 3.42 inches the length of the blade from tip to the handle 8.97 centimeters which is 3.53 inches the blade thickness is three and three quarter millimeters which is 0.1475 of an inch the blade depth is 2.84 centimeters 1.13 inches the thickness of the edge right behind the grind there is 0.62 millimeters which is 0.0245 it's a tiny bit thicker than i prefer but not bad the grind angle on uh, the back side, which is where the pocket clip is, 18.7 degrees, 
on this side, 19.5 degrees. So that's less than a one degree difference between the two sides. So not bad. It's a little more shallow, a little more steep than the 20 degrees that's average on EDC knives. AUS 10 can handle that no problem at all. So uh, AUS 10, you can probably sharpen this thing to 18 degrees per side and it'll still be super robust. And I might just do that because it's close to that anyways. Yeah, wouldn't be bad. Now for the handle. The handle length is 12.27 centimeters. That's 4.83 inches. The grip area is about 10 centimeters, just under four inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.65 centimeters. That's 0.65 of an inch. The handle depth, it's biggest right there, 2.95 centimeters, 1.16 inches. When the knife is closed, it's biggest right up here, 3.21 centimeters, which is 1.26 inches. The total length of this knife when the blade's deployed, 21.2 centimeters, 8.35 inches. Good, very good. So I'm liking this knife an awful lot. It does have one known flaw. Now, the flaw is uh, Tuya knives in their production run, there's a number of these talisman knives that have just a little bit of rock lock, just a very tiny bit up and down. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you can see it, but it's a very, very tiny bit up and down that way, just ever so slight. Um, there are some models that have it worse, but uh, since Dave checks everyone before he sends them out of the door, he's already sent a number of them uh, or taken a number of them off the shelves that he just won't sell them. But if they've got a very tiny bit of uh, rock lock up and down, you might get that. So be aware of that. But I don't mind that tiny bit of rock lock. One of the reasons I don't mind it is because this um, liner here, that lock arm is so big. And because the spring's pushing that way, it's not going to fail. Uh, I just can't see it. You'd have to hit it on the back extremely hard while having some pressure pushing it that way because it does take a fair bit of pressure to push it out. They do have a relief cut here, but it's still a fairly thick chunk of steel there. So that's that tension, that spring tension pulling it that way is quite strong. So that tiny bit of rock lock, usually that would bother me, but simply because of the way they made this knife and these liners, it, it's not a concern for me. If it's a concern for you, that fair enough. I'm just telling you my point. Uh, Tuya knives, the way they sell them is kind of cool. Um, you can pay an extra $5 and get a pouch. Okay, I'll give you a still picture of the pouch. I don't have it downstairs right now. Okay, here's the pouch. Molly compatible on the outside and uh, nice on the inside with uh, quite a nice zipper. Uh, you can get a second pocket clip, a black one for $3. Uh, you can get micarta handle scales and a deep carry pocket clip for five dollars. Well, prices are all U.S. dollars because uh, the store is in the United States. The price for this knife, it's 69 American shekels. So it's not in my low range that I like to do most of my reviews in, but I do review some knives that are outside of that $50 or less range. 69 U.S. dollars right now is about 92 Canadian. It's about 61 and a half euros, just a little bit less than 53 British pounds. So the features on this knife, thick liners, love those thick liners. Comfort of this knife, like I've told you before, in the hand, it just feels very, very good. Somebody with uh, men's small hands and smaller might find it a little bit too big. But if you've got medium to large, extra large hands, um, you're going to find it okay. My hands are between large and extra large. You know, depending on the manufacturer, I sometimes have to buy extra large gloves. And if I, you know, come right up to the front there, let's do it this way. If I come right up to the front there, see, I still got a bunch of knife left at the back. So extra large hands can easily find comfort and security on this knife. The ball bearings and the pivot are awesome. Well, here's some pictures of the inside of the knife. As you can see, it's got a captured stop pin. It's got ceramic bearings and detent. Uh, but I was wrong. The uh, pivot is not a fixed pivot pin. It is a free spinning pivot pin. I got it apart without too much trouble. Hopefully they uh, change that on their next 
issue of the Talisman. I do hope they make some more of them. Very comfortable, solid feel. You get AUS 10 steel. Now, AUS 10 steel isn't as cheap as, you know, 8CR 13 MOV. It isn't even as cheap as D2, because D2 has been around forever. Uh, this is a good Japanese steel. And if you watch Cedric and Ada, uh, that's Peter's channel over in Australia, and he does all the cut tests and stuff, uh, check out his charts, and you'll see that AUS 10 is, you know, up in that list. It's not way down by the cheap uh, steels at all. It's a good steel. Um, comfort, feel, dimensions. Um, you know, if you do just use the tip of your finger, you can sneak up and do some work. Pinch grip like this, awesome. Um, super, super comfortable. I don't miss a lanyard hole at all. I very, very rarely put a lanyard on pocket knives. Um, I was thinking about some people might decide, hey, they could just drill a little hole through the G10 right there. Not a good idea because then this piece of a liner back here, I mean the backspacer, will only be connected at one spot there and there and it could start to rotate in there. These two screws keep it in the place that it's at. So if you drill a hole that goes all the way from liner to liner <laughs> through the G10, um, not the best idea. I'm just saying. If you've got other screws and you want to turn this into an open pillar construction, you could easily just tie off on that back pillar. Uh, but you should see how close the knife comes to the end there. So that might be a concern. The tip of the knife might cut into the liner, uh, into the uh, lanyard. So I wouldn't do that. The jimping up here, it's just right. It's not extra. It's not too little. It's not too much. It just offers a really good amount of grip. A uh, slight chamfer on the sides of the blade on the tang there. Good stone wash. Nice, nice high flat grind. I'm calling it a full flat. Like I said, you've got 3D milling on the G10 here. Um, it goes up and down and up and down. It's just a beautiful knife. Well, I think I've said everything I need to say about this knife. I like it an awful lot. If you're in the market for one of these, go ahead and you know, go to Warren EDC. I've got the full address down below and uh, get yourself one. If you're one of my Patreon supporters, yes, I am getting a video coming out probably, it might be within hours of posting this one. It might be tomorrow uh, to tell you who the winner is for uh, the Patreon giveaway that I do every month. So hang on, it's coming. Thanks to everybody who likes, shares, comments, subscribes and just simply watches my videos. You guys are awesome. Remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.